Okay, so it's time to go through. We're gonna create two presets now in this soft portrait category and then two presets in the vivid landscape category. Both of them are gonna be a standard color and a standard black and white version. Now in the soft portrait subcategory, the standard color and standard black and white are gonna create a nice high contrast look to the image, but they're gonna soften up a little bit of the detail so we're not basically going too far and enhancing, say, the pores on the skin, uh, blemishes, and just bringing out these things that are unflattering on our subjects. We want to soften up the highlights. We want to kind of reduce the appearance of blemishes and imperfection in the skin. and want to really make these portraits look flattering. And that's why we call this basically a soft portrait look. So let's quickly decide which images basically we would classify into the soft portrait category. So if I flip back into grid view in my catalog, I'm just going to give you guys a, a couple examples of what would be which. Okay, so this whole grouping of images right here, this is all stuff that we would call portraits. Now, it's not necessarily all the way close up on their faces, like it's not a super tight macro shot, but this is still showing a lot of facial detail. Our subjects are really kind of the primary focus in this image, and it's something that we would classify as a portrait because we want to soften it, making it look a little bit more flattering. Now, switching back to the grid view, that's basically the same with all these images up to here. Up until this point, this is really an image that we would classify more as a landscape image. We want to really focus on kind of the nature in this shot, bringing out you know all the different colors and making it really nice and vivid. Notice how, and this is the same thing, this is another landscape image or what we can classify as a landscape shot, even though it has people in it. Because we're not so much worried about skin tone and stuff since it's so far pulled back. Once again, we have a, a grouping of uh, portrait shots and right here, this probably is still close enough that we would consider it a portrait shot, even though you could do a little bit more to it. It's not quite pulled back far enough for us to consider landscape. Again, we get down here, this is something we call landscape and so on. All right, guys, so hopefully you guys kind of get the difference between what we'd consider landscape versus portrait. And we'll give you guys another example too when we get to the actual landscape section. All right, so let's jump back to the develop module and let's create the first of our presets, which is just going to be the standard color uh, preset for our soft portrait look. Okay, so let's go back to the image we're going to use for this tutorial. It's going to be this image. I want you guys to select just a basic portrait that kind of represents your, your typical shot. Okay, so this is a really good representation of our typical portrait, the distance from the, the camera to the subject and everything like that. So pick a good shot, make sure it is properly exposed and that your white balance is semi-accurate because those are two things we're not going to adjust in our preset because we want to adjust those on an image to image basis. All right guys, so at this point your image should already be imported and the standard import preset should have been applied. We always recommend you guys start your presets with the standard import preset or with a preset that's closest to where you wanna go with your new preset. Uh, now we're just gonna start with the standard import, we're gonna dial in some adjustments and we're gonna start with the basic panel over here. So let's dial in some adjustments. Again, this is designed for a soft portrait look and so what we wanna do is kinda of smooth out a little bit of the highlights on the skin. So we're gonna pull highlights down just a little bit more we're going to reduce shadows just a tiny bit, and we're going to reduce whites significantly. We're gonna pull it down to negative 30. Okay, once again, this highlights and shadows reduction is gonna basically pull down our highlights so it kind of matches our shadows a little more. It's just smoothing out those tones over the skin. All right, now with blacks, we're gonna raise it just a little bit. And so notice what we're doing here. We're raising blacks, we're also raising shadows a bit from where the standard is, and we're reducing highlights and reducing whites. So this serves to bump up the blacks, pull down the highlights, and overall we're smoothing out tones. Now the next major adjustment we're gonna make is to clarity. We're gonna pull clarity down to negative 10. Once again, this is gonna to serve to kind of reduce mid-tone contrast, and it's gonna basically pull out a little bit of extra detail. So it's basically going to not pull out as far as enhance, but to remove a little bit of extra detail. So again, it kind of further smooths out skin tones and stuff like that. We don't wanna to go too low on the clarity because it will soften up too much and we lose too much detail. So negative 10 is a nice general number. And remember these are standard presets for these looks. We still might need to do a little bit of modification on an image to image basis, but we wanna make these presets basically as kind of straightforward and general as possible so that they work on essentially every image we apply them to. Now with vibrance, this is something you guys can choose. Sometimes, you know, I like to have vibrance at 15. Sometimes I like to have it at zero. Sometimes there's images that basically have too much color in the skin and you don't want any additional vibrance because basically it's going to add those additional colors to the skin. It's not gonna look very flattering. 
For our preset, I think we can leave it at 15 and be safe with that. If you guys want to leave it at zero, that's fine too. Again, a lot of this is going to be very stylistic and very preferential. So dial in the settings that kind of look, you know, correct according to your style. So if your style has, say, you know, let's say you like to do uh, portraits that have kind of that high contrast crunchy look, then leave the clarity up, leave your contrast up, but make adjustments so that basically these presets, this standard color preset is going to mimic your style over each one of your images that fit this category. All right, so now let's go down to our tone curve. Now in dialing in our tone curve, we're gonna create a slight S curve just to boost overall contrast a bit. So we wanna pull down the shadows a bit. We're gonna pull up the mid-tone highlights. We're gonna pull up, or sorry, the mid-tone shadows. We're gonna pull up the mid-tone highlights as well as kind of adjust our uh, whites up here. Now, most of my tone curves, I've always start out with basically four points. One for the blacks, one for the mid-tone shadows, one for the mid-tone highlights, and one for the whites. Okay, so you guys can always have more if you want, but I always use at least four points to have kind of control in every single quadrant. All right, now why are we using the tone curve uh, panel rather than using the actual contrast slider to add our contrast? Because using the tone curve allows us kind of a little bit of extra control in controlling exactly where we're adding contrast to. The contrast slider is kind of a very much overall adjustment as opposed to the tone curve where we can select exactly which areas we want to add contrast. All right, so I'm just going to make some minor adjustments. I'm going to pull this uh, blacks down just a little bit. And then we're going to go to the mid-tone shadows. We're going to pull it up just a tiny bit so it's kind of a little bit more bright in the mid-tones. And then with the mid-tone highlights, I'm just going to bring it down a tiny bit. And then with, mid, or with the uh, whites, we're just going to pull it a little bit to the right and a little bit down. I just want to make this a very subtle adjustment so that it's not too powerful over the majority of our images. So let's go over which points we have. So we have a blacks point, which is at about 15.7 and 13.3. Again, adjust to your own style. This is kind of our style, but you guys want to make minor adjustments to, you know, for stylistic preferences. So our first point is at 15.7, 13.3. Our second point is at 38 and 40. Our third point is at 62.7 and 67.8. And our last point in the whites is at 84.7 and 88.2. All right, now let's check out our detail panel. Now, the, our basic sharpening settings that are, are imported from our import preset are actually totally fine right there. Uh, we can zoom into our image and just double check, but it should be fine right there. These other blemishes and stuff, if we need to clean those up, we need to actually do either some spot removal or take it into Photoshop. What I do want to do with my detail is add a little bit of noise reduction. Not too much, because going too much is going to basically kill our detail in the image. So if you take it above 20, it's going to basically reduce too much hair detail and everything like that. But right around 15 to 20, we get this nice kind of slight softening effect, especially over the pores and the skin. That's really the only area that's noticeable because it's we're not doing a lot of noise reduction, so it's a very minor adjustment. But it's great for basically smoothing out skin tones just a little bit more. So I'd recommend leaving it around 15 to say 20 max, okay? We'll leave it at 20 in this one. And let's go down, just double check our lens corrections. I think we're good with that amount of vignetting. Let's zoom back out on the image just so we can check it out. Yeah, we're good with that vignetting and everything else should be fine where it's at. So it's time to actually create the preset. Now what we're going to do is go over here and hit plus. We're going to dial in uh, the name, which is going to be 11. And then you're going to call it standard color. And so notice how we named it 11 because it's going to go under this 10 subcategory. So it's going to be labeled right after 10. So from 10 up to 20, everything's going to be 11, 12, 13, 14. After we hit 20, it goes 21, 22, and so on. So we create these different subcategories based on these number groupings so that they're all kind of in order. All right, so I want you guys to hit check all. Make sure this auto tone thing isn't applied. If you hit check all, it shouldn't default it applied, so it should leave it off. All right, now we're gonna leave white balance and exposure as selected because what these presets are doing is they're gonna reset it to the actual uh, where it was at when it was imported, okay? So if we check this out real quick, if we go to our basic panel, you can see that our white balance is set as shot and import uh, exposure is at zero. Okay, so when we create that preset, it's going to do the same thing. Sorry, let me type that in again. Standard color. Whenever we select one of these presets, it's going to reset it back to those import defaults. And for the white balance, it's going to be at the camera default. Now we use this setup for each of our Mixology presets because we want each preset to basically be a standalone preset. When you select it, it removes all the previous adjustments and then adds these adjustments. So they kind of you can move from one thing to another without leaving behind basically settings from previous presets, okay? Now the, what we do wanna do is wanna go to lens corrections and disable lens profile corrections, 
transform, and chromatic aberration. Why? Because these are all built into the standard import preset. And depending on whether we choose with profile corrections or just the standard, it'll make those adjustments from there. So we don't want to basically sync these settings across every single image because we might want different settings for certain images. All right, so at this point, we're going to hit create with our preset. And there we go. We have our standard color presets made. Now let's take a look at the difference between these two presets, between the standard color versus the standard import. Now because we imported our images with the standard import preset, that preset is actually set as the before version of this image. So if I hit backslash, it'll show me the uh, this is the standard import version of that image. Okay, So the standard import version, you can basically see how it's pulling out a lot of the detail, but it's also adding a lot of highlights over skin tones. Now this couple has flawless skin, but if they didn't, you'd see too much detail where it comes to uh, blemishes on the skin, the pores, and everything like that. And if you get even more close up on the image, you're going to see even more. So if we actually zoom in, check this out, you'll see a big difference in, in basically the softening and kind of how flattering one image is compared to the other. Let's let this preview render. All right, there we go. So there's the before. And once again, here is the after. So look at how much softer and more subtle kind of the highlights are in the skin. Uh, our skin tones look so much better. We have nice contrast still in our image, but we don't have crazy colors and highlights over skin tones. So this is our standard color soft portrait look, guys. Great job. Let's go on to the next tutorial where we create our standard black and white soft portrait preset.